The Holy Gospel appointed for Ash Wednesday is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, selected verses, the words of our Savior Jesus. Jesus said, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father, who is unseen, and your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. Well, here we are on Ash Wednesday, the first day of another Lenten season. Today is the first day in our 40-day pilgrimage to Calvary's cross and Christ's tomb. And throughout the history of the Christian church, the season of Lent has, has really served two purposes. First and foremost, it's a time in which the saving work of our Savior Jesus is on center stage in a very formal way. This is the time of year that we celebrate and commemorate the events through which Christ accomplished our salvation. But it's also a time in which we think very deeply on the topic of repentance and of spiritual renewal. As we begin another Lenten season on this Ash Wednesday tonight, we have before us some more of Jesus' words from the Sermon on the Mount. And many of you probably remember that we've spent three Sundays in Epiphany season uh, meditating on a pretty good chunk of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And so for that reason, perhaps it's very fitting that tonight as we begin the Lenten season on Ash Wednesday, we have some more of Jesus' words from this very famous sermon that he preached early on in his ministry. And I don't know, as you heard the words of our Lord Jesus read a few moments ago, did you have a bit of disgust for the hypocrites that Jesus describes? I mean, what sort of person gives to the needy for the whole purpose of being seen by others so they're praised for their generosity. What sort of person prays in a church building or in any public place just to be seen by others so they think, whoa, there's a really spiritual person? What sort of person fasts 
you know, goes a time without food. And the whole point of fasting is so they can tell people and make it obvious to them that they're fasting so that they go, oh, wow, have you seen so-and-so? Man, they are really devout. But what sort of person does those sorts of things, right? It, this sort of behavior makes us cringe, doesn't it? Because we know intuitively that, that pious behavior is not meant to be a means for personal promotion and for attracting attention. So if, if you're going to give to the needy, right, well, then give to the needy because God commands it and God is pleased by it and because the needy need it. Don't give to the needy, right, in order to attract attention and praise for yourself. If you're going to pray, well, then pray because God commands it, and he's pleased by it, and he promises to hear your prayer. Don't pray because you want to attract attention for yourself as a spiritual person. And if you fast, well, then fast because your Heavenly Father is pleased by it. And fast because, well... It frees up food that you could give to the poor or money that you would have spent on food to give to the needy. And it frees up time, time you would have otherwise spent on preparing and eating and cleaning up after a meal that you can spend on reading God's word and prayer. But don't fast because you hope to attract attention for yourself so someone says, whoa, what an incredibly spiritual person. We understand what Christ is getting at here pretty easily, don't we? We get the point he's driving at and what he's rebuking. Because we know that, that pious behavior is not meant to be a means for personal promotion. All these actions are good, right? Given to the needy is good. Prayer is good. Fasting is good, but they have to be done for the right motivation, for the right reason. God needs to be the audience, not other people. Otherwise, they become empty works in God's eyes. But, of course, Jesus lived in a different culture than we do. And so some of these examples of good deeds that people were praised for in his culture maybe don't totally carry over into our culture today. The first one probably does, right? Giving to the needy, that one you can kind of take, and that makes sense to us in our culture today. But, you know, praying for praise doesn't really translate into our culture, does it? I mean, imagine if, if you decided to pray for a show to, to gain praise for yourself out on the corner of, seldom seen in sawmill out here. As folks drove by, they wouldn't go, oh, wow, what a spiritual person. They'd be like, what a weirdo. <laughs> What's up with that person, right? You'd never do that. Also, you'd happen to tell someone you're fasting. They wouldn't immediately think that you're a very spiritual person. They'd probably assume that you're just on a crazy diet, Right? So you wouldn't do that for praise in a spiritual sense. But that doesn't mean that, that we don't struggle with the essence of what Christ is driving at in these words from Matthew chapter 6. You see, the key thing for us to meditate on tonight and to think about on this Ash Wednesday is how much good do I do Ultimately, not because God's commanded it, and not because it serves my neighbor, but because in some sort of way, it serves me. Perhaps I gain honor, or favor, or thanks from those around me. And that's the motivation behind why I'm doing the good that I'm doing. 
You see, our sinful flesh that lives inside of us by nature, it, it has this natural desire to be honored and loved and praised and held in high regard and respected and esteemed. And we learn pretty quickly that one way to get that honor and love and esteem and respect is by doing things others around us say are good. And so we do those good things. But again, the problem is, ultimately, they weren't done because they're commanded by God or because they serve our neighbor. They're done because, ultimately, they serve us. And that's not right. St. Augustine, one of the great church fathers, had a really thought-provoking statement on this very topic. He once said, The love of honor is the bane of true piety. Other vices bring forth evil works, but this vice seeks to do good works and destroys them. That's an appropriate thing for us to ponder on Ash Wednesday, isn't it? On Ash Wednesday, we take extra time to, to ponder our sinful state, which is really the cause for Christ's suffering and death, his saving work. And so we take extra time to think about the sin that clings to us by nature, the sin that we've committed. And, and of course, we acknowledge all the obvious evil that we've done, whether in thought or word or deed. We confessed it earlier. Those are all classified as sin. But it's good for us also to know and to realize that what's also classified as sin is all those times that we've done good, but the motivation was wrong. We've, the times we've done good, but the motivation was more self-serving than meant to serve God or neighbor. And it's no wonder God's not pleased with these good things. Because he wasn't the audience. He wasn't the benefactor. We were. And so for this too, he says, remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. But at the same time, this is exactly why Lent happened. This is exactly why Jesus Christ resolutely set out for Jerusalem and set his face to carry the cross to Calvary where he suffered and died. It's exactly why Jesus came to save us. He went to the cross to redeem us from the guilt of all of our sins and to save us from the eternal death that we deserve because of our sins. And as he lived his life, on this earth, he didn't live his life in the sight of, of men and women trying to find favor or honor from them. He lived his entire life in the sight of his heavenly father, seeking only his approval, only his will. And what was the father's will? The father's will was that Jesus Christ would go to Jerusalem and suffer and die on the cross to redeem us from the guilt of our sins and to save us from the death that we deserve because of our sins. And because Jesus Christ did that, because he laid down his life as the atoning sacrifice for our sins, God says to you and he says to me, in the words of Isaiah the prophet, chapter 1, he says, come now. Let us reason together. Let's make a deal. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though your sins are as red as crimson, they shall be as white as wool. We heard those same words in the hymn we just sang, right? Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. He washed the crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. 
That's God's promise to you and to me in Christ. And he holds out that promise to us in the gospel and, and we can know and, and, and have a firm hope that though we are dust and ashes, though unless Christ returns first we will be dust, the dust that we are will be raised to life on the last day and we will live in newness of life in the presence of God forever. That's God's gift to us in Christ. And so in view of that gift, brothers and sisters, let's strive to live our lives not in the sight of human beings to gain favor from them, but in the sight of God. Let's do good because God commands it, because it serves our neighbor. And that's it. Let's serve God and serve neighbor by doing good, not, not being concerned about whether people are noticing or seeing and therefore honoring us, but rather just being joyful and comforted by the fact that our Father in heaven sees every last bit of every last good thing. And that's enough. We can rejoice in that. In closing this evening, let's pray. Almighty and merciful God, you never despise what you've made and always forgive those who turn to you. Create in us such new and contrite hearts that we may truly repent of our sins, obtain your full and gracious pardon, and serve you and neighbor as you will. Through Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.